Hello, hello, everybody. What's up? My name is Iman, and welcome to the Majidus, the show where I get a chance to talk to some of my favorite artists and creatives out of the MENA region. Today, I'm here with the incredibly talented Syrian Croatian artist Danya. Known for her timeless, sultry voice and also for blending Arabic and English in her music, Danya brings a refreshing yet nostalgic and classic sound to the scene. Danya, welcome to the show. Dude, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> thank you for Hi. being on the show. I'm so happy to have you. I'm so excited. I've been loving listening, so I feel very honored that I get to be on it now. Um, my dad has already asked me for the link. He's also hype. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. I love supportive parents. Isn't that yeah. just the best? My mom listened to all of my podcast episodes oh, that's and so she's sweet. like, she'll message me and be like, heard the last one. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thanks, mom. I love that so much. <laughs> but yeah, how are you? How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm currently taking my quote unquote lunch break from work. <laughs> Got you. Um, Got you. So this is what I'm doing with my, it's been like, I only a few months ago took like a corporate job. So it's been very much like trying to find how to do music in between the cracks and the times that I have. Mm. Yeah, um, no, I feel that trying to balance the music and also make money type oh, lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Capitalism. Yay. We love to see it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Those of you who don't know, Danya is actually based in New York. I think you're the first person that I've interviewed so far that's been based in like on this side of the world. So oh, like no timing way. wise with interviews, it's been <laughs> it's been kind of nice actually. The other interviews I get up around like nine sometimes oh. or like start the interview around nine so that it's mm-hmm. like eight PM their time or a little oh, wow. after. Yeah, that's everyone's been in like yeah, Dubai or Egypt or I think for the most part Dubai and Egypt have been like the main so far so that checks out but what you got sipping on right now um throat coat because you know I'm a singer capital Mm -hmm. s um Mm -hmm. so yeah I'm trying to like I want to record something later today and so to like soothe my nerves it, it tastes disgusting but now I associate it with like some crazy mind game of singing better. So it's just like I have to drink some even though I don't like it and psychology. You don't like the taste? I love throat coat. I love the taste of throat coat. Yeah. It's like kinda it's like kinda like a fall tonic type Uh, deal. I I think it's the licorice. I just really, really hate licorice. Uh Like Seuss. You know you know the drink Seuss? I can't stomach that stuff. Seuss. I don't know if I've ever had Seuss. I think it's like a licorice drink. I I tried Mm -hmm. it once when I was like younger and I was like, I refuse to do this ever again. I'm not a big licorice person, but it just tastes very fall to me. Oh I got, God. I got my cortadito. It's a mm. little cortado. Oh, still, it must still be warm there, huh? It's yeah, iced. it's LA. Yeah. It's I can't drink anything hot out here unless I'm trying to just sweat for the rest of the day. So it's got to be iced. It's an iced cortado with oat milk mm, from yummy. Cafe Tropical, my favorite cafe <laughs> in LA. Um, yeah. As I said, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, it's tradition that we have a little drink on the mm-hmm. Majlis, fit the vibes and everything. So yeah, cheers to that. Cheers, cheers. to having you on the show. So oh, thank you for cheers. having me. Of Sahtin. course. Got to one up you with the sahtin. Sahtin, of course. I honestly <laughs> was just saying cheers up until the Yara episode. Mm-hmm. Since then, she was like, oh, you don't say saha, you got to say saha. And I was just like- I'm dead. I didn't think about that. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've just never said that in Arabic. I've just never had to, like, cheers people while I was in Arman. Mm-hmm. We just didn't do, do that, that, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, girl. So, how long have you been in New York for? Have you been, like, living there for most of your life? Or did you go there for work? Or It's been, like, three years. I did, I mean, yeah, I did come here for work in, in so far as music. I was actually pre-med. And doing the whole, like, I'm going to apply to medical school and, like, working okay, in clinics pre-med. and labs. I was, yeah. <laughs> and then wow. um, I had a midlife crisis. JK, I had, like, a mini little crisis. I'm not going to say how old I am because, you know, sexism. But um, 
uh, basically, my mom got like super sick, and alhamdulillah, she's better now. But like at the time, I was like, this is not looking good, and I had like a whole crisis about like the American medical system and medical care in general, and like mm-hmm. what am I doing with my life, and like I love music, and the first song I released on Spotify was actually about my mom and about how sick she was and our relationship. And she's Croatian. Um, for those who don't know, I'm half Croatian and half Syrian. Yes. Um, you're also a halfie like I am. I am. <laughs> half I white, am. Half that, that third, that third culture kid lifestyle. Oh yeah. That's a great, mm-hmm. that's a great concept. I've always wanted to write a song about being a third culture kid. I should do it. Um, mm-hmm. Tangent. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. So she was, yeah, I really questioned my whole life. Um, and I basically was like, I don't think medicine is what I want to do with my whole life. Um, and so I ditched my entire life in Philly and moved to New York to pursue music. And here I am talking to you. So it's going pretty wow. well, hopefully. <laughs> no, it's doing, you're doing amazing right now. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. But that's a wild life journey to go through and kind of realization to have in just changing career paths entirely. You just felt that music was a better way for you to express yourself obviously it's a form of expression but like you just felt that that resonated with you more and that was more of a calling to you than medicine in that moment um in a way I also a lot of the research I did was studying music in relation to healing actually like music therapy and like thankfully these days there's a lot more research on it and a lot more opportunities but I remember in undergrad I was looking for more like opportunities about studying music and the brain and music and healing and there was just so little at the time um Mm. but so in a way I wouldn't say that it's not liking healing or not liking that art form but more just like I didn't like the American medical system and also medicine in the way that it's practiced in the U.S. is also something you can kind of go back to when you're older versus music is something it's very much like a a young person's game um at least the Mm. way it is here you know And it's, you know, it's kind of like I only have this time of my life once. I only have an opportunity to try this and do this and have, like, the flexibility to just uproot my life and just do something different um, Mm. in this time of my life. So I was like, you know, I'm going to do it. YOLO. And then a pandemic happened, so. (laughs) God, Uh, okay. That was, like, a low sign for me, but. (laughs) Wow. Just kidding. No, that was very beautifully said, but also, yeah, timing. That is really (laughs) unfortunate. So you, I guess, started writing, did you officially start writing and putting out music around like 2019 then? Yeah, that was really when I first, and I was so naive looking back. I didn't realize, I didn't understand the industry at all. I didn't understand the game of it at all. And, you know, I was like really lucky. It was like my um, second song or at least that got put on a Spotify playlist. And I didn't realize that that was a good thing. And I was just like, okay, that's cool. And then I was depressed and just stopped making music and I was like whatever nothing matters I can just do it again next year whatever you know I didn't um understand like the game of putting things out consistently making connections Mm. meet you know that kind of thing so it's like so that is definitely something that I wish I had known at the time but I think also things come when they're supposed to if that makes sense like you have to be in the right headspace you have to be in the right emotionally ready for what life has to offer you if that makes sense no totally it very much does and sounds like yeah at that moment you were still like going through a lot of different feelings as to like (laughs) career path changes and also how seriously do you want to take this so Mm -hmm, and also how serious it can really get because I feel like a lot of people who start wanting to develop their artistry don't really understand how much work really needs to be put into that and how many details and corners you got to fill like every every all the bases have to be checked down from like promotion to marketing Mm -hmm. to brand to your aesthetic to the actual music of course and then consistency and social media oh my god it's just (laughs) I could go on for literally forever literally and yeah and it's you don't know that, you know what I mean? You don't know that unless you're told that or taught that or in the scene or whatever. So it's kind of just, I don't know, maybe I watched too many movies, but I definitely did the whole pick up your life and go to New York with no plan. No just vibes. <laughs> no thoughts, just hey, vibes. Hey, I mean, that's, that's one method for sure. <laughs> and that's honestly such a, like, a... Uh, I don't want to say brave because I'm not trying to be here like you're so great, <laughs> but like it's it's a bold move that's for sure. But like, um, so when was it? 
when you realized, okay, I want to take my artistry a little bit more serious and I want to start going into more a more professional route? Like, what was it that changed and shifted that? Um, it really, I mean, the move to New York was me trying to do that. I just didn't realize that that included things like visuals and marketing and all these other aspects of creating music in a capitalist system. I'm gonna, how many times am I going to say capitalism? Um, <laughs> creating music in the society we live in and the, with the, oh my gosh, and TikTok became huge in the last like two years. You know what I mean? Like that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. And I was really lucky because I um, came here and I met a really great group of people. Shout out Good Stuff um, at Good Stuff BK on Instagram. <laughs> um, I made a really, yeah, I made a really great group of people who like uh, visual artists and musicians and um, dancers and all this stuff. And they really like helped me understand and like really taught me like everything that I know. And like we're all kind of learning together, also. Um, Mm. so it's really just been a big learning process the last few years, but I'd say really in the last, like maybe year or so is when I've really been like, okay, this is how this works and let's, let's get after it. Nice. That's really cool. Yeah. Having a collective and a team Mm -hmm. by your side full of other people who are also in a very creative mindset and lifestyle is super inspiring and just yeah, it makes you want to work even harder at what you do. Oh, and yeah, literally. Constantly yeah, inspired sure. by new things. And um, yeah, that's it's really nice to have that. Not a lot of people can say that either or like have found that circle just yet. But mm-hmm. yeah, I also have Wealth Care, which is like a small collective. Mm-hmm. It's like Shout about four people. Shout out Wealth Care. <laughs> we love Wealth Care. Um, yeah, super small team of just like four people. And we all are just working really hard at also my artist development, but also working at the label and what it has to offer and the different services that we plan on promoting eventually. And it's just been so interesting, all these different things and areas that we're trying to tackle. Like eventually event planning is going to start um, going into the works. Mm-hmm. This oh, is probably exciting. the first time I've like started saying that. But yeah, I guess we're going to start doing that pretty, pretty soon. But Wait, Let me know. I have to book my tickets to L.A. I want to see this in action. Uh, <laughs> honestly, we're trying to, we have just so many plans, so many dreams and just need to mm-hmm. execute them. And it's all mm-hmm. just a process. Like the mm-hmm. cryptocurrency was a year in the making. And so mm-hmm. I don't think people realize how much planning goes into like, oh my gosh, so just much. rollouts alone, let alone um, rollouts for like projects or singles, let alone like giant business ventures. <laughs> like Literally. that shit is years in the making. Um, I've heard arguments of artists being like, oh, the second you look at yourself as a brand, like Mm -hmm. you've already lost yourself. Like you're, Mm -hmm. you don't look at it as music anymore. And I'm like, no, (laughs) it's an investment. If anything, Mm -hmm. like you're investing in yourself as a professional in the Mm -hmm. industry. Like that's how you get into the professional industry. If you only were to focus on the music, obviously the music is very important and that's what gets your fans attract that's how your mm-hmm. fans are attracted to you and how they resonate with you and everything and at least an aspect of it but yeah if you don't look at yourself like a brand or take that seriously then it's going to you it's especially in today's industry you will mm-hmm. fall behind and it's just at least that's how i see it but 100%, i've definitely had yeah I've had conversations with people who are like, no, it's the music is everything. And I'm like, well. the music is everything though. Does not, I don't think that they're ex- mutually exclusive, you know, you can, mm. you can, music can be the whole point and the reason you're doing all of it. But it, it, like you said, it has to come with the other stuff if you want it to actually be like a, a thing thing. Oh, oh for did they sure. Teach, you went to Berkeley, right? Did they have, does it, was it mostly like a music conservatory type thing or do they teach you things about business and So it all depends on your major that you take, but for the most part they do implement, like a lot of it was music theory and like all the practical stuff that goes along with it. But depending on the major that you took, I did pro music, professional music was my degree. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. with that you could implement other concentrations. So I concentrated in performance and songwriting, Mm -hmm. but within pro music, the umbrella, like they teach you a lot of, entrepreneurial skills on how to treat yourself like a business and a brand and how to negotiate and also how to write up 
letters to professionals and how to like present yourself as a professional mm. um, while focusing and concentrating in the performance space and then also songwriters and mm -hmm. understanding what copyright laws are and how to get mm -hmm. your royalties. And mm -hmm. so it, they did teach you all that on how to manage the business aspect of it, which is really nice. Um, and they have a whole music business uh, major in itself. So that in itself is a whole other category. And they go into depth from what I've heard um, pretty well. But yeah, they go through all different aspects in that school. Like you can study contempt uh, EPD, which is electronic production <laughs> design. Wait, electronic wait, <laughs> electronic <laughs> production design. I'm not fucking. Mm, them. No. Oh, you know what? Okay, <laughs> they teach you how to like build your own synths, basically, yeah. <laughs> and like create your own like sound design, basically. Yeah. As well as collaborated with Boston Conservatory, and so they have uh -huh. like a dance aspect to it as well, and oh, a musical cool. theater aspect. So, yeah, so it's very well versed, which is nice. Um, so yeah, it was nice to be able to understand the business aspects of it as well, and then people that go to Berkeley can then pass on that knowledge to everyone else. So you're not paying a whole whole, I don't know, your life. The men's podcast <laughs> is now just reteaching Berkeley. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, just hit up my songwriting classes. It's all good. <laughs> um, but you mentioned that you grew up, did you grow up in Philly? Is that where I you spent like most suburbs of your life? Of, yeah, I grew up in the suburbs of Philly. I'm in Lower Marion. For If Very anyone's cool. a basketball fan, Kobe Bryant's same high school. Um, I am not a basketball really fan, sad. but I do know that because um, I went there and there was like a little well, shrine for he like paid for our gym and stuff. There's a little shrine for him in the oh wow gym. It was really cool. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, I grew up there. Um, nice. Okay. Cool. And I had I was just wondering, just because you and I are also third culture kids, I honestly hate that phrase so much. But like, it's it's the only way we can really describe it. It's better but than my term for it, which was up until now a happy. So yours is better. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. So you're better. You're good. A happy. Oh my god. I kind of love it. I'm not going to lie. It has like a shock factor to it, but it's oh, also yeah. like. It sounds what? like offensive, but it's just, uh, yeah. It's not, is it? But it's oh fun. My god, I hope not. Um, no. I'm not offended. I think it's okay. hilarious. Okay. <laughs> um, just being a, a happy. Um, I feel like. Anyone, I mean, specifically being like half Middle Eastern and half not, I feel like there's a lot of, uh, is the word stigmas that I'm looking for? I just feel like there's a lot of a sense of not belonging. At least I'm speaking oh, for yeah. myself and I feel like- For sure. I've recently had a lot of conversations with people who are half- I, they've also been able to relate to that. And for the longest mm -hmm. time, I have not been able to find that crowd. Mm -hmm. And I, or at least found a crowd where they've also been vulnerable enough to speak on that. And mm -hmm. yeah, talk about how they really feel about feeling that way. Or I didn't even know that people really did. I just felt like, okay, someone ends up being able to feel like they belong to one of the sides at least, or identify more with one of the sides. And um, I was just wondering... On your end, like, did you feel that there was a disconnect? Also being that you grew up in Philly when you're mm -hmm. half Croatian, half Syrian. So how was that dynamic for you growing up? Oh, for sure. It was honestly super difficult. And it's honestly nice to hear. I mean, it's not like I'm not happy that you went through the same thing. But it's nice to hear that it's like a relatable thing with people with our backgrounds. Um, mm -hmm. It's, yeah, because you never quite feel like you belong. And it's, I think it's kind of a corny. I think, oh my God, is it so we... Taha, is that his name? On Instagram. He has like a hilarious video because he's also half Filipino. Oh, like I think. Filipino, is he half Palestinian? Half, I think he's half Palestinian, oh, half, Arab, half Filipino. And he has like a, oh, it really, oh, he has a funny this. video about just, oh my gosh, I spend too much time on the internet, uh, but making fun of it. But like, yeah, it's like you really never feel like you belong on either side. And then there's also the American side. So it's like three places that you both belong to and don't feel like you belong in. And there's always mm. this kind of imposter syndrome, at least that I feel, where it's like, oh, I'm not Arab enough. I have to prove that I'm Arab enough. I have to speak better Arabic than this person. I have to sing better Arabic than this person because otherwise mm. I'm not legitimate. 
Um, uh, especially yep. like growing up, um, the first few years of my life, like classic immigrant parent story, like they were both working too much to like take care of us. So my grandparents came from Syria and they raised me the first few years of my life. And so like, and then I'd go back to Syria every summer until the war. And my cousins were all, all the Arab side was here. Like the uh, Croatians don't have as many children from what I understand. So I just had like a lot of, I was just, my entire upbringing was a lot more Arab than it was Croatian, which also mm. kind of led to its own like Because it's just like I felt so strongly Arab and grew up in this culture and all my, you know, family and close friends and all that stuff. But then also like I am still half Croatian and I am still half white and I still look very white. Um, I'm kind of rambling. Um, but yeah, there's definitely this kind of pressure that I feel to almost perform an identity because I need to um, solidify it within myself. Mm. If that makes sense. No, it definitely does. And I, I was actually going to ask, like, incorporating Arabic into your music, mm -hmm. is that, are you fluent in Arabic by any chance? I used to be, I'm, I would say semi at this point. It's just been so long. Um, and it's also specific, like, Halabi Arabic. Like, like it's a lot harder for me to understand anyone who's not, like, Syrian or Levantine or, like, from Halab. Okay. <laughs> um, gotcha. But I definitely, like, I can speak with my grandma because she doesn't speak English. So, like, I can talk to her. I can have conversations. Mm. Um, I sing in a lot. Oh, sorry. Um, I sing in Arabic a lot. But a lot of that, incorporating Arabic into my music and singing in Arabic, that's honestly because I just grew up on a lot of Arabic music. And, mm. like, okay. Um. Like, I've been taking, uh, the past year I've taken Arabic singing lessons too, so I can be, like, more classically trained in it. Because I've always sung it, but I, now I want to, like, be, like, good at it. Mm. Um, and it was hard to find a teacher before. But, um, oh yeah, singing in Arabic a lot of times is, like, for example, in cardamom tea. Like, in, you know, mm. I pray, I'm, like, I'm Muslim, and I pray, not to say if you don't pray, you're not Muslim. But I, I pray uh, the five prayers, and I speak Arabic in, during the prayers, because that's how you pray. Um mm -hmm. And so a lot of times I'm talking to God or if I'm having certain conversations in my head, it will be in Arabic. And so like that's why that part of the song is in Arabic. It's kind of like this conversation with God, this conversation with that part of myself, um, with the guilty part of myself for not whatever, whatever. Um, but then also recently a lot of now that being culturally ambiguous and having culture is cool, a lot of like. A&R people and stuff will be like, oh, you should sing like in Arabic, but not all Arabic, just a little bit of Arabic because mm. that makes you unique and that makes you marketable to the Arab sector. And it's just like, yes, but also this is like who I am. And it's a little manipulative and it's a little like You're not trying to compromise your own identity either. Yeah, it is just like a little off-putting when people will be like, oh, you should like put a little bit of Arabic in there to make you more marketable and make you more yeah. like niche and TikTok algorithm. <laughs> so that always comes mm. into it. That's um, fascinating. Yeah, it's true. I feel like nowadays, especially Arabic is starting to slowly be more integrated into pop culture now. Mm -hmm. um, slowly but surely. And like, love to see it. <laughs> it's amazing. But um, I was just curious as to whether you incorporating Arabic into your music was a sense of you feeling like I don't have the sense of fully, fully belonging. And so wanting to incorporate Arabic to feel that sense of like recognition almost. Because mm -hmm. at least for me, I've been finding myself wanting to incorporate more Arabic in my music, not solely for that reason, but it's a big reason. I just yeah. have always felt this need for carrying some sort of responsibility. For mm -hmm. one, there's not many Armani women who mm -hmm. put out music. There's probably like two other people that I can think of And they're based out there. So also we make very different stuff. And so I've, and even them, I don't think they sing in Arabic. Like it's all mm. English. But for me, I'm like, I think it would be really cool if I incorporated Arabic because my whole life I've been told I don't look the part and I don't sound like the part. I'm mm -hmm. super American when I speak. It sounds <laughs> very American. Mm -hmm. So I, um, was like, okay, maybe I should incorporate more Arabic. And so I was wondering if on your end, it was also a similar feeling of like, I just also would like to get this recognition. I would love to be put on Arab X or something. <laughs> I've been putting out music for like two, three years now and never have been on a playlist like that. But I'm like, maybe if I put in some Arabic, maybe I'll yeah. get some recognition type exactly. thing. But 
Uh, it shouldn't come from a place like that, but I guess I was also just curious as to whether you feel a similar way. No, for sure. It's like really hard, I think, sometimes to separate the two. Um, the representation thing definitely is huge. Like growing up, I always, always wanted to see Arabic music in the American mainstream. I love Arabic music and I grew up on Arabic music. Um, and I've always loved it. And I think it's just so beautiful. And I think that it can make American music even more beautiful if we like listen to it and incorporate it. So part of it is that I've just always wanted to hear. I just like the way it sounds and I want to hear it in the music I grew up in, um, if that makes mm. sense. Absolutely. That was like a large. Yeah. But honestly, like I said, like hearing so often from so many sources like, oh, the only way you're going to be on a playlist is if you sing in Arabic. The only way blank mm-hmm. is if you do it. You know, it definitely like kind of. It's always in the back of your mind, you know? Mm-hmm. I try totally. really hard to make it come from a genuine place. But, you know, we're trying. <laughs> and that we are. We are mm-hmm. trying our best. But I definitely feel when I listen to your music that it does come from a genuine place. And you've also Thank mentioned you. that you write with your grandma or, like, have written with your grandma <laughs> before. And I just think that's the most wholesome thing I've ever heard in my life. This is the funny thing... <laughs> The funny thing, so like with Arab grandparents, at least my Arab grandparents, was they sang to me all the time. Like we we all had, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, we all had these little like, you know, then doing a halwe dum dum, like that kind of like little like, Mm -hmm. we just sing back and forth to each other. That was really cutesy, I'm sorry. Um, But also, when they found out that I was performing, they're very uh, religious and there was like a, there was a big, scene in which it was like you're gonna go to hell and are you performing in front of boys and oh my god (laughs) yeah no very part also part of the reason it took me so long to really fully get my whole soul into this or life into Mm -hmm. this um it's 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 hard with the stigma um of being an arab woman especially um Mm -hmm. an arab muslim woman um and a lot of times i feel like for third culture kids once your family leaves the country they're from, they cling on to that tradition from however many years ago, even even harder. And so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, for sure there was lots of, what the heck are you doing? You are going to go straight to Jehennam type vibes. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. No, totally. That's very easy to fall into that mentality when that's what you've been told growing up. And mm-hmm. And, like, honestly, kudos to you for finding your identity even past that and, like, being able to not kind of give in to what it is that they say or Mm -hmm. feel that pressure. Like, obviously, you're going to feel that pressure. I mean, it's hard not to. (laughs) But, Mm -hmm. like, being able to still take your own route and your own power back is really, really admirable and really cool to see. So For sure. I mean, I recognize that it comes from a place of, like, of care and anxiety Mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's like not coming from a negative place like oh always yeah it's always you know I yeah you know Mm -hmm. they yeah (laughs) they care about you they want to protect you they want to keep you safe and Mm -hmm. anything that's different or put too out there that may cause controversy is going to be seen as like bad (laughs) so exactly it doesn't it doesn't have to be that way but you know When it's coming from, like, your grandparents, for instance, even your parents, like, that's a whole different generation, way, Mm -hmm. way different generation. And, like, they're not exposed to the same things that you are or at least as open to the things they're being exposed to. So, you know, that's definitely something to take into account. I also had to learn that for myself when I went (laughs) back to Amman last year. And I was like avidly trying to learn Arabic and then I finally mm-hmm. did. And then I talked to my grandma and then she was just on a <laughs> different page than me. And I was like, no, uh, please, no, I'm finally having deep conversation with you. And you're telling oh, me yeah. like I'm wrong and like I don't know my <laughs> destiny and all this oh, yeah. shit. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn, I really right. thought we were getting somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, you know, she's like 70 something so 78 mm-hmm. I don't know like she's way older of course and she lived in Amman like most of her life mm-hmm. of course we're not gonna have the same views <laughs> so yeah big wake-up call for me as well so whenever you're songwriting where have you found at least recently what have you found yourself writing about recently or are you the kind of person that like finds a topic and then you're like I'm gonna write about this today I don't, I don't know. Everyone's that's, process is different. That's a great question. Um, what it used to be 
was I would wait for a traumatic life event and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then pour all of my <laughs> thoughts into this one song that I obsessed about for months until I released it. Um, however, that is not sustainable. <laughs> um, uh, recently, I've been really into um, imagery and realism. Mm. Um, if that makes sense, just kind of like simple day-to-day uh, kind of emotions, feelings, experiences, because I think there's just a lot of beauty in it and that whole idea of like romanticizing the everyday and and that kind of thing. Um, also, like I've been like learning more Arabic songs recently also and just like the phrasing and the the way that it makes everyday life so... I've always loved Arabic poetry. It just makes everyday life just so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, like, I've always been inspired by it and always try and, like... I remember when I was writing Cardamom Tea, for example, I was reading a lot of Nazar Abani. He has, like, a really... There was, like, this English translated book of poems. And he was just... I just read a bunch of that, and that's how I wrote Cardamom. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, uh, but Lana Del Rey, her imagery has been just kind of in my head recently. I was th- listening to, like... She's just really good at making everyday mundane things feel, like, extraordinary. That's very true. Um, so, like, that kind of vibe. I also, like, have been toying around with um, an, the, the immigrant story and, like, my like stories of my family, like my dad's story, my grandma's story. Mm. And so that's something I've been working on also. I can't work on one thing at a time. I have such bad ADHD. <laughs> so I usually, like, start, like, ten things and eventually one of them gets done. That's right, been so the that's vibe recently, though. I've also been doing a little, little bit more lo-fi stuff, but definitely I love just. That. And also, I want to incorporate more um, Arabic instrumentation. Like I was doing nice. that, I was trying to learn how to produce, and I've been doing that, but I'm just not doing it well. So I need to figure out how to do it well and cohesively. Yeah. Nice, but that's Those a good right. that's a good path to get on Arabic in- instrumentation. I feel like even mm. in when people hear that in hip-hop music even if there's like oh, some sh- sort of like oh my goodness, arabic yeah. sounding melody in the background like strings or something people lose it they're like oh my god and you're like oh this we've been known about these strings are you serious <laughs> that's so it's good. oh my gosh yeah that one song that 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 samples what is it that um uh, there's a really famous Aaliyah song that but when this i think it's the name of the song um, that samples that it's yeah I've been hearing it less recently of this Arabic string samples I'm like let's bring this back let's bring it back and let's, let's bring it back it. it was like let's early 2000s it. R&B mm-hmm. would bring it in a lot For I remember sure. that so yeah good. no honestly that's why early like, 2000s R&B is amazing that's <laughs> what I'm so saying. good yeah <laughs> timeless timeless genre I also gotta say I Cook When I'm Homesick is like one of my favorite songs by you. It's so Thank you. good, dude. I heard that song and I feel like I fell in love. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. I like the melodies in that song. The production is so smooth and it hits at the same time. Thank you so much. Yeah, shout out Low Effort for that production. He's incredible. And also Mama's Boy, a.k.a. Adam Ginsberg, both of them produced that track. And it was, it was fun. That was definitely, that was, I think I actually ended up writing it. Partially due to that conversation I had with my grandparents about how they are. Oh yeah, literally, like at the very end of the song, I go and asfi ya nana ya baba ya halabi in sit kilshi. Like I'm so sorry, I've forgotten everything, I've forgotten my roots, and it's all about like the pandemic. I'm isolated, and like my one connection at home was cooking Arabic food or Arab oh. food. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's so beautiful. Yeah. And so it makes sense why you would connect to that one for sure. It's yeah, that was just a whole everything. another layer of like, okay, I really love this song. Like, I've loved it, but now I'm like, oh, God. Hearing it from you as well firsthand, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to listen to that all day today. Oh, uh, yeah. The only problem is you really can't understand the word I'm saying. So I'm, I'm, I've been thinking about writing another song with like the same words, but you could understand me. <laughs> no, honestly, like even if I couldn't fully, it's just... Your tone, dude. Your tone is so beautiful. Thank like you. the depth in your voice is just like mesmerizing. You're making me blush. Thank you. It's so much. It's just <laughs> the truth. I'm. I am not even trying to just gas you up like that. I promise you, you're <laughs> you're amazing. And Nadine and I, we like fangirl over you. I hope you know that. Her I fangirl over like, both of you. So I just <laughs> need you guys to know that. I literally. Oh my gosh. I literally I think cried that one um, Instagram live you guys did. I was like oh trying to God. finish a, get, hit a deadline for something and I was so stressed. And then you guys were just so nice and so validating of me as an artist. I was like, maybe I'm not a fraud. Oh my God, stop. <laughs> it was really great. You guys are the best, honestly. 
I love our our Middle Eastern North African girl squad mm-hmm. that we got going on. Oh gosh, like I don't yes. we haven't made a group chat yet, but I feel like a group chat is like well overdue. Honestly, but, that is a great point. I'm gonna do it right after this. Honestly, just point. put everyone in the chat. <laughs> That'd be I love the community that we have and I love that Me too. I've been introduced to it slowly but surely like I've always known Mm -hmm. of people around but like to be recognized and included into Mm -hmm. this community has been so (laughs) just like I feel like I made it you know I feel like I'm (laughs) like oh my god I'm I'm here up here with my the people that inspire me the most and like they also feel the same way about me like what am I doing here fuck so oh my how did how do you feel mutual Mm -hmm. how do you feel that you got incorporated into this like community of incredible Middle Eastern female talents. I feel like so lucky. I feel validated. Yes. <laughs> it's really, yes. it's also, we, you're part, you know, you, we need like, you need a community organizers, right? And I've never, I'm a little bit too shy <laughs> to be that kind of person, but you and Nadine especially, like the both of you are, I've noticed are very good at creating community and creating this like space that's like inclusive and talented and just like really wonderful and it's learning like meeting you guys and like being incorporated into this community has been like just the highlight of my year for sure it's definitely like you you can't do anything on your own you know we Mm -hmm. are communal creatures humans are so communal and it's you need it takes a village to like raise a child and it takes a village to raise a young adult (laughs) you know like puberty part two over here Oh. Um, and it's been really lovely, and thank you guys. It's, oh my yeah. god, no need to thank us at all. Like I'm just, <laughs> I just love seeing other women do their thing, especially mm-hmm. Middle Eastern North African women. Like it, it mm-hmm. makes me, it brings me a whole new level of joy that I didn't even think. I, it's like what I feel like a mom, and I feel like I'm proud. <laughs> like it's not even my responsibility <laughs> oh like my that, god, but I, I just <laughs> the level of how proud I feel. I feel like a soccer mom that's like, let's go. <laughs> oh my god! I'm so happy for you. Like it will so bring me to tears it. whenever I mm-hmm. see any accomplishment, even like a like an artist in in a new article or something like that. And I'm like, oh mm-hmm. my god, you did that! I'm so proud of you. It just yeah, scene noise is the best for discovery of that stuff. Oh my gosh, I love I love scene noise. Mm-hmm. Scene noise is great. Mm-hmm. Shout out scene noise. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just feel like such a calling towards that. Like it just brings me mm-hmm. so much joy to see community, but also to put other people on. So I, yeah, I, I, I want nothing less. Like this is what I, <laughs> if I could make this into a career, like I will do that for real. And also to gain the recognition is nice, but I just love to see where this Middle Eastern scene is going in general. Oh, for sure. It's, it's nice. so cool. It's so beautiful to watch it like grow. It really, mm-hmm. really is. Honestly, honestly. I to counter that, what is something <laughs> in the scene that you've noticed, I guess specifically Middle Eastern North African, that you're tired of seeing? Or yeah, what are you tired of seeing and what what do you want to see more of? Yeah, that's a great question. Um so I think being in the U.S. makes this more difficult, but I think kind of variety mm. um, in what is given a platform often can be a little bit lacking. Just be like, like t- types of music or like people from like different backgrounds and that kind of thing. A lot of times mm. it can be the same type of song, same type of music that is pushed, same like vibe from an artist. Same sort of sound. Um, same sound, yeah. That's the correct word. Thank you. Mm. Um, and, but I think that's the thing is like as I'm watching a girl, I'm seeing more of that. I'm seeing smaller um, artists with more niche genres like blossom and like mm. you know, I think that yes. <laughs> that's cool. I like yeah. No, that's a good answer. I feel like I've seen a similar thing like from specific regions. Um, I feel like I've seen a lot of artists that have a similar sound and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Or I've heard this artist emulate a sound of an artist that's American and I'm like, okay, we Mm -hmm. already have like a weekend or like a Travis Scott Mm -hmm. or something like this. And I totally understand taking inspiration because I also, everyone does that. What? Everybody. Um, 
but I think sometimes, at least from what I've noticed, is we lack authenticity sometimes in like real experiences that that individual will go through. Mm, and I feel like even with myself, I, I will, I, at least I've listened to my earlier stuff and I feel like I lack that a lot. I want it to sound like something that I love. And I was like, mm-hmm. I love this sound. So I want to sound like that, but I wasn't talking about my experience. I was talking about just general hype shit. <laughs> and so I, feel like I've noticed that a lot more in other artists as well in the scene. And I, I think more, less now, maybe that's just cause I'm expanding like my knowledge on who's in the scene now, but mm-hmm. I, yeah, I think sometimes we may lack authenticity or are scared to dive into that because it's, we, we fear that not everyone's going to see it the same way or feel like oh it's not really what I'm looking for like why listen to this when I could listen to this guy who's got Mm -hmm. like who's super famous and like everyone loves their stuff Mm -hmm. but that's an artist insecurity thing so I don't know I definitely feel that and it's only really like I said been recently that we're seeing more resources allocated to the MENA, SWANA, whatever you want to call it region Mm. Um, like a lot of record labels are opening bigger like factions there and like you'll see people like um Oof, what's his name? Oh, I'm blanking on his name. But he moved from like he moved from Spotify to work for like be like the Middle Eastern guy for a record label. I think it was Empire. Like I think I know who you're talking about, and I'm can't remember. His I'm name really blanking well. on his name. Mm, Lovely person. N- Ooh, can't remember. <laughs> Love the person. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think as people are recognizing the market there, there will be more resource allocation. I agree. Also, sure. like, you know, mm-hmm. oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna make like a, like a comparison to like right now, like Latin music is like really, really big in the U.S. and mm-hmm. because of that, there have been more, I guess, more like, the when people recognize that there is a market for something, they'll put more resources there, and that's what happened with like a recent like, which has been wonderful because that music's wonderful, um, explosion mm-hmm. in that genre. Although there are issues again with like whitewashing and. Um, yeah. Colorism, but that's like oh, that's a, that's another podcast. <laughs> it, that is a whole other can of worms for sure. Yeah, that. Yeah, gaining the recognition, I think, is step one for bigger companies to see that and then like start moving towards that direction. But I think right now the only thing that a lot of people have is to make up their own resources for themselves and like start mm-hmm. collectives and like build themselves from the ground up which honestly is for sure like at that point you don't even need a big record label if you're just consistent and you're constantly working Mm -hmm. towards that and you start building your own fan base like I mean you've already made it you're giving the record labels a reason to come to you at that point so (laughs) um I think that's something personally that I would love to see more of is more collectives Mm -hmm. of smaller communities within a bigger community start coming out and building up their own scene we gotta and have a D thirty six for Arabs. That's what we, <laughs> you know, like D thirty six, the South Asian label. They're a South Asian label under Sony. Um, okay. It's like we gotta have an analogous one for Arabs. That's my my new goal. <laughs> kind of love that. Okay, nice. I feel like there's. Um, I've heard of. I believe their name is Abu Recordings. I believe Ooh. they're a label, like an independent label, right now. I know that Saint uh-huh. Levant works through them. Or works mm-hmm. with them. I think Feluca as well sometimes. I'm not too, too familiar, mm-hmm. but I just heard about them like a couple days ago and I was like, this is cool. Mm-hmm. This is cool. I love to see a collective, um, Middle Eastern love collective. Hey, um, yeah. But yeah, I'm trying to see more of that. And also more women in the scene. Like, Oh, for sure. I feel like we just can't <laughs> get enough of that. Like, it's, it's a controversy in itself and I love to see it every time. <laughs> <laughs> every single time I'm like just constantly breaking boundaries love it it allows for other people to see that and be like I can do that too leading by example and I just we gotta normalize this cause what women can sing too and put themselves out there it's fine what? we're fine it's really yeah. okay <laughs> so what can we expect from you in the next and like I guess the last couple months of the year it's what October at this point is it October Oh my God, it almost is. Oh God, it really is, huh? Where does the time go? Um, oh, I don't know. I feel like an old person. Where does the time go? Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess it is almost October. What? 
That's a great question. <laughs> in the, oh, in the future, I have just like so many songs I want to put out there and I'm trying to make them cohesive and inshallah an album next year. Fingers crossed. Because I just have like a huge stockpile of so many songs. Um, it just takes, as you know, a while to produce them if you don't know how to produce on your own and especially if you have to pay, produ- you should be paying your producers. So like, pay yes. producers and like, um, so like just money and time. It just takes a lot more money and time. Mm-hmm. Um, than people think and so hopefully next year Danya album Danya music album hold me accountable <gasps> album? We're, we're releasing a song you and I are releasing Ooh. a song soon oh, is that coming yeah, out we are. by the end of the year that that is coming is out that? see we wanted to come out, have it come out at the end of the year and like visuals are the only things that are that's stopping us right now we just need to get mm-hmm. on top of it because the plan initially was an album to put out mm-hmm. or an EP and mm-hmm. um, that was going to be one of the leading singles of the EP. But now we've decided to just drop a bunch of singles and kind of plan out a rollout That's for right. that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. instead create, I'm basically giving out my whole rollout plan, but <laughs> um, creating an era around it as like, you know how albums are usually for the most part cohesive and have like a brand aesthetic and everything around it. Mm-hmm. Instead of creating an album or creating an era, but it's just more, it's just consecutive singles all around mm-hmm. this cohesive um, mm-hmm. visual aesthetic. So that'll be fun. And yes, our song is definitely there within that era. Ooh. And I just, I just, I'm so excited, it's so dude. Good. It's so good. Uh, it perfectly really encapsulates. Yeah, dude, me too, because you bodied that song. We were struggling for so, so long with that song, and then we just sent it to you, and you (laughs) gave it exactly what it needed. Like, exactly. That is so nice of you. I remember remember listening to it, and (laughs) my friend was like, "Um, yo, I don't think you could do better than her. (laughs) Not actually. (laughs) She's like, she did did exactly what the song needed. And I was like, there's no pressure in that. No, 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 that's fine. So I remember getting so anxious and I sent you like 10 versions. I was like, okay, do any of these 10 verses work? And you were just like, yes. (laughs) Yes, all of them work. Can we put in all of them? Like, oh my Uh, God. No, you absolutely killed it. And your your voice on this song and our voices together sound they so well sick. Together, they work very sure. well together. I was very impressed. I was like, mm-hmm. this was the right decision for sure. And Craig, like, this is his baby, like, of a song. Like, he really? loves happy. production and everything. Like, he was not ready mm-hmm. to let this go. I was like, Aww. maybe it's just one of those, like, we just leave in the <laughs> vault. And he was like, no, we're sending it to everyone we know until we can find someone. And I think you were the second person we sent it to. And yeah, mm-hmm. that was it. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. And That um, brings me so much joy. Yay. Yeah, we were, like, so, so blown away. And every time I listen to that song now, I'm like, oh, it's just and I like put it on my live every once in a while when I'm on Instagram and see what people think. <laughs> and everyone's like, where is this? And I'm like, I'm so excited. You're gonna have to wait for this one. But um Yeah, no, I'm I'm so excited. Ugh. Yay. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully end of the year, but it might we might be looking at early twenty twenty three. It'd be like that for sure. You know what did drop today though? Is mm-hmm. the new Rami. New Rami season Ooh, I'm three. I'm so excited to see that. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. To I know watch what that. I'm I doing seen... tonight. Hell yeah! I still haven't seen. There's another. Now there's two. There's Mo also that I want to watch. I haven't yes. seen that either. Oh, Mo is like so, so behind. good. Mo is like so away. good. I'm really excited for that. I also have yeah, a meeting, so I might. I have to I have to peace out soon. No Just worries like, at all, girl. No worries at all. Well, I want to thank you for being on the Much of This with me, Danya. It's been so amazing thank talking you for to you. Me. Always a great time talking to you. Same here. Always enjoy my time talking to you for sure. You're a lovely person. You man's the best. Everyone should have oh the privilege God. of talking to you, man. <laughs> oh, I love you. Thank you. Everybody, y'all can go find her on Instagram. Is it Danya underscore music? Is Danya underscore music underscore? There's two underscores because someone took Danya, Danya music, Danya underscore music. So it's Danya underscore music underscore two cool and she's also on tiktok you can find all of her music on all platforms everywhere ever spotify mm-hmm. apple music soundcloud probably also youtube <laughs> title and rami deezer everything <laughs> literally all of it anywhere please listen to me please 
yeah, yeah, please go check out her stuff. Cardamom tea. And also, I very highly recommend I Cook When I'm Homesick. Best song. Danya, thank you for being on the show. Thank you of for course. having me. See you soon, inshallah. Let me know when you're in New York next. Absolutely. You Hopefully. let me know when you're in L.A. I'm trying. Let me know of the, the, once, the what's, once your collective does their... Uh, I, will fl- I will literally fly down for that. I will fly <laughs> down for the collective. Amazing. All right, All right cool. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. Y'all make sure to go check her out on all platforms. You can find her under Danya. That's D-A-N-I-A. And also make sure to go check her out on Instagram too at Danya underscore music underscore. Once again, thank you guys so much for listening and I will see you in the next episode.